Just as with fractions, mixed numbers require common denominators when adding or subtracting. But this video will have all common denominators. That's so we can focus on some of the properties of adding or subtracting mixed numbers and fractions or simply combining mixed numbers. I want to mention when adding or subtracting just fractions, I like to arrange them horizontally. I think that makes it easier for finding common denominators. But when working with mixed numbers or mixed numbers and fractions, I prefer to arrange them vertically. It makes some of the calculations easier to follow. We'll go ahead and get started. I usually put the larger number on top. In this case, it doesn't matter because both signs are positive. We will be adding. Since we already have nines, and then five and two give us seven, 10 and three gives us 13. So there's our answer. Looking at the next problem, both signs are the same, so we will be adding. This fraction just goes under the previous one. We have our common denominators, so we keep them. 4 and 2 gives us 6, and this 8 simply comes down. So 8 and 6 sevenths is our final answer. Looking at this one, the signs are different. We will be subtracting. We have our common denominator, and then it's 8 subtract 5, leaves us with 3, 14 subtract 2, this leaves us with 12, finally looking at number 4, the signs are different, we will subtract. We keep our common denominator. 8 subtract 6 leaves us with 2, and this 5 simply comes down. So 5 and 2 thirteenths. Looking at number 5, the signs are the same. We will be adding. We keep our denominator. We add the numerators. 8 and 4 gives us 12, but we can't leave it in this form because 5 fifths is equivalent to a 1. So what we have is 12, and this 5 fifths means we have plus 1. So the final answer is 13. Looking at this problem, the signs are the same. We will be adding. We keep our denominator. 5 and 4 gives us 9. 10 and 3, 13. But 9 sevenths is 1 and 2 sevenths. So we can't leave it in this form. This is equal to 13. And then again, this 9 sevenths, we have to add 1 and 2 sevenths. So the final answer is 14 and 2 sevenths. And real fast, this is 9 divided by 7. It goes in once with 2 left over. You keep your denominator. Looking at this one, the signs are different, so we will be subtracting. Now I was careful to put the larger number on top. When you subtract, you always have to put the larger number on top. We have common denominators. But when we try subtracting the numerators, if you have two, you can't take away six. If you were just dealing with integers and you had positive 2 with a negative 6, you could say, well, the answer's negative 4, 
and you would be correct but what you actually do is you subtract 2 from 6 and you keep the sign of the larger in this case you can't subtract 6 from 2 and I can't rearrange them because the larger number 13 is on top so what we do is borrow 1 from the 3 and we add it to the 2 7 so 3 becomes 2 or 13 becomes 12 and I need to add it to 2 7 that means I need common denominators if this is a 7 I'm going to write this 1 I'm adding a 1 here so that means the numerator has to be 7 so again I borrow 1 from the 3 and this is the one that I borrowed now I'm adding it to the 2 7 this is kinda hard to look at so I'm gonna rewrite it 12 and 9 7 I'll bring this one over it's still 5 and 6 7 before I go on I'd like to emphasize 13 and 2 7 is the same amount of stuff as 12 and 9 7 this is just written in a different form like on a previous problem when we had 13 and 9 7 we had to rewrite it as 14 and 2 7 in this one we had 13 and 2 7 but we had to rewrite it as 12 and 9 7 you can go in either direction now finishing up this problem we'll keep our denominator I guess we just didn't even need that one and then 9 subtract 6 leaves us with 3 12 subtract 5 leaves us with 7 so 7 and 3 7 is our final answer looking at number 8 this is our last problem the signs are different we will subtract careful to put the larger number on top we would keep the denominator of 8 but when you try subtracting you can't subtract 7 from 5 so we'll need to borrow 1 from the 6 this becomes a 5 and we add the 1 to the fraction here which means we need a denominator of 8 and thus a numerator of 8 because 8 eighths is equivalent to 1 now this is a lot to look at so we'll rewrite it 15 and 13 eighths and we'll just bring over the 3 and 7 eighths keep our denominator 13 subtract 7 is 6 15 subtract 3 is 12 but we can't leave it in this form because 6 eighths can be simplified so this becomes 12 divide by 2 you're left with 3 divide by 2 you're left with 4 so 12 and 3 fourths is our final answer if you'd like a little practice with these concepts, as long as you're at my website, mrbformath.com, you can download a worksheet with a detailed answer key.